بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد اهل السنه والجماعه is very cautious regarding the creed of takfir and regarding tibdi' and regarding tafsiq when declaring a muslim to be a, a non muslim uh, to be a, a disbeliever or accusing them of apostasy or accusing them of being a wicked sinner or accusing them of being an innovator the ahl sunnah does those things only in accordance with evidence from the sharia and i wanted to read some very beneficial speech from alama alama uh, fozan salih bin fozan hafizallahu ta'ala one of our major scholars of ahl sunnati wal jamaa that is living today and who is a part of the Hayat to Kibar Ulama, the committee for the major scholars in Saudi Arabia. He was asked, Ma huwa fisk? Wa meta yukun Muslim fasikin? He said, he was asked, what is fisk? So what is, you know, when we accuse someone, uh, you know, a wicked sin? And when does a Muslim become a fasik, become someone who is a wicked sinner? You know, when do we make that hukum on someone? Alama bin Fuzan, Hafizullah Ta'ala, he replied, he said, Al-fisq huwa khuruj an ta'atillah. So, fisk, it is to leave obedience, the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that a person becomes disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, wa huwa nu'an, that is of two types. Fisk al-kufr, well, fisk ma duna kufr. So it's of two types. It's the kind that takes you out of the fold of Islam, the dis- disbelieving fisk, that which is just to the extreme where it expels a person from the fold of Islam. And then there is the fisk, which is a wicked sin. It's a major sin, but it does not expel someone from the fold of Islam. And so then the sheikh explained he said fisk ma duna kufr and that's what we're just going to talk about now we're just only going to talk about this because there's a lot more that we can uh speak about this issue but we want to keep it short and brief so we're going to talk about what the sheikh said in regards to the fisk that does not expel someone from the fold of islam that means that they are a wicked sinner the sheikh said wa fisk ma duna kufr la yukhruj min al millah lakinnahu yanqus al iman ففيه نوع خروج لكنه لا يخرج صاحبه من من الإسلام. so he said the the lesser type of fisk it does not expel someone from the religion. however it does reduce your iman. so that shows you the sheikh already in that uh, sentence there he made clear for us that أهل السنة believes that iman fluctuates. sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low. So the the lesser kufr is the kind that uh, does not expel you from the fold of Islam. And he said, "Wala yajaluhu fajirin," and it doesn't make him a fajir. A fajir is a wicked sinner, is how they translate it. The sheikh is not making it clear. Does fajir mean that they're out of the fold of Islam? But rather, I think. He means, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, that a fajr is a wicked sinner who's done a major sin, but there's a, some distinction between being a fajr and a fasik, especially the lesser fisk, as we're talking about. So he said it doesn't make them a fajr, and it doesn't expel them from the fold of Islam. Bel yukun fasikin, but rather they are... Uh, uh, become a fasik, someone who is a fasik. Wa yukun Muslim fasikin either tarkaba, it either either tarkabu, kabira to min kabira the noob. So he said, and a Muslim becomes a a fasik if he does one of the major sins. And then he mentioned some kelzina, washarb al khamr, washaraka, 
واكل الربا وما شبه ذلك من كبار من كبار الذنوب كبائر الذنوب so the sheikh said حفظ الله تعالى he said and he gave us some examples of what uh, the major sins are that are considered fisk that make someone a fasik by doing them he said for example the one who commits uh, zina meaning adultery or fornication or they drink alcohol or they steal or they take interest you know they take interest so that right there shows us uh, from the statement of the sheikh and all of this it goes to adilla it all goes to the quran and the sunnah of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the understanding of the salaf letting us know that these are major sins allah makes war on the person who takes interest so those people in america and canada and other countries who say yeah it's okay it's a durura it's a durura it's a necessity to take riba so you can take one house just one house on interest because you don't want to have to rent well that's not a necessity so that is not something you're not forced to take that interest we can still live and live a decent enough life by renting apartments if we have to or renting some some other uh, a trailer park whatever but we do not it is not a necessity you're not going to die it does not it's not between you and homelessness to take interest and in, and have a house so that shows the falsehood of their statements and that this is a major sin and unfortunately there are people who yantasab al ilm who are considered people of knowledge who make fatawa for this wa'iyad billah min dhalika so as we mentioned the last one that the sheikh mentioned was taking interest and then what resembles that from the major sin so if someone does a major sin then they're considered a fasik they've entered fisk they've done an action of fisk and they are considered a fasik then the sheikh went on to say hafiz allah ta'ala hafiz allah ta'ala إذا لم يستحلها. So that's beautiful. Then the Sheikh gave us a very important principle that Ahl Sunnah looks at when uh, regarding the issue of takfir. That as long as a person, if they're doing some of these major sins like taking interest or using drugs and drinking alcohol and fornicating. If they're doing these sins, and may Allah forgive us of our sins, all the Muslims, and guide us all back to the Hak. That if they're doing these sins. that as long as they do not declare that those things are lawful then they are still muslim and they have just done a major sin and they are fasik so for example if we have an individual he's drinking alcohol and he says hey this is permissible for me i i i'm not really feeling that i know you know about the quran and stuff like this but you know that's outdated i you know it's okay for me i just have a little drink this person is making it lawful what Allah has declared lawful and this takes a, a person out of the fold of Islam but something important i want to mention before ruling that this person is a disbeliever you should take that to the people of knowledge to people to the scholars and those people who have studied these issues who know how to deal with and make these rulings upon a particular individual but the person has done something that has taken them out of the fold of Islam but as far as ruling upon that person as Sheikh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah mentions that every person who does an action of kufr is not a kafir so Ahl Sunnah is careful about making these rulings and we leave that to the judges and the uh the ulama then the sheikh went on to say اذا لم يستحلها وانما ارتكبها عن الهوى والشهوه قادته اليها فانه يعاد فاسقا so if a person does not say that it's permissible to do those sins and they do these sins out of their desires following their vain desires or they uh you know they they they're inclined towards it because they have a lot of extra desires and so forth and they fall into these sins and it's it's as if they're being the shaitan is whispering for them to moving them towards that then they are considered a fasik as we mentioned and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the muslims everywhere with toba on this blessed month of ramadan which is coming very soon wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam